Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, we are going to rank every single eyeshadow palette that I tried in the month of September from my least to my most favorite. And if you want to see what those rankings are, then just keep watching. <laughs> Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about the new makeup items on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. And we're going to go over all of the palettes that I tried in the month of September. Uh, some are older, most are newer, and yeah, it's a pretty decent month of palettes. We had some real winners. So I tried 10 new palettes in the month of September. So we're going to start off at number 10, my least favorite. Unfortunately, that has to be the Chantecaille safari collection eye trio now i did do a whole review on this i just don't think it's worth the money i believe it was like 78 dollars or 60 70 80 dollars either way you get three shades and i feel like i love the elephant but i just feel like the overall general packaging is cheap for what you're paying for i don't like that these guys in here they move they're not even stable so the elephants are like upside down sideways it just looks cheap to me and the shadows are okay. I like this palette. I wore the taupe shade in my Charlotte Tilbury Super Nudes video. I wore the gold shade in my Selena Rare Beauty review and I did a whole review and I liked the colors but it's just not worth the money. These are more washes of colors. I don't really like these all together mixed up in a look. I just feel like they look better alone and while I do like the effect on my eye, I just don't think this is worth the money at all. I can't recommend that you get it and I was really excited for this product because this is the first Chantecaille eyeshadow palette that I purchased and I thought it was like their single eyeshadow so I was really excited and it's not like their single eyeshadows the one that are like super glittery the luminous I, I can't remember what they're called but I absolutely love those those are worth every penny so I had very high hopes for this palette and I mean while I will continue to use it of course and when I use it it's not a bad experience don't get me wrong but it's certainly is not worth the price tag so that is why that is ranking at number 10. so let's move on to number nine and this is the nomad cosmetics tokyo eyeshadow palette now i wanted to love this one so bad and i think the looks that i created with it are very pretty but it's just too much of a journey to get there and really like the looks even though they turn out pretty because the colors in this palette are pretty they don't really turn out how i envisioned so first of all i just love it because it's super cute you. That's why I purchased the palette. The colors, everything, the whole theme of this, really gorgeous. I love Nomad's Cosmetics vision behind their brand, but I could not get down with this formula if I'm being completely honest. Love the color story. Love the whole story of the palette. Love how these are all shimmery shades. Love how these are all pastel mattes. I just find these take too much to get to work. You definitely, definitely, definitely need to use a white base with these, which is fine. They're pastels, but I really do feel like these shadows fade in like five minutes flat. After five minutes applying these, I find that I need to reapply more to get the vibrancy that I'm looking for. And overall, I just... <sighs> There's something that's not there to fully complete my love for this palette because it looks so stunning, but it takes too much work. It takes too much rebuilding, having to use that white base, having to use glitter glue for these bottom shades. And I just feel like the colors can tend to blend together. I don't know. I really do like Nomad Cosmetics. I still really do like this palette because the color story is just amazing in this guy and the looks are so very pretty. But just when it comes to my experience with like high quality eyeshadows, these just aren't quite there. Moving Moving on to number eight, this is from Huda Beauty. This is one of their three palettes that they released this month, and this is the Sand Haze palette. And to be honest, I was just rather underwhelmed by this particular palette. So while I do really enjoy this launch from Huda, this palette in particular really is nothing special to me. I feel like I can get these colors within her own line. And like I said, it's a pretty palette, but I just wasn't impressed with it. I wasn't in love with it. I felt like it wasn't anything really original and you know what some of you guys might really like it it's funny because even though this is my least favorite of the three a lot of you guys this was your favorite because these are the most wearable colors but to me it's just it's such a warm normal palette that didn't stand out to me at all all right moving on to number seven and at this point I pretty much like all of these palettes don't have too many negative things to say but we have the Ofra Cosmetics collaboration with Leora she's my friend here and this palette is just adorable 
and it's very good quality. I wasn't too sure what I would think of Ofra's eyeshadow quality. This is my first experience and I was very impressed, I must say, especially with this yellow. And I think even though this palette has five shades, it actually is very versatile. You can get more looks than you think you would. I love that you have this fun pop of green for like a green smoky eye or under the lash line. So that makes it really fun. Again, the yellow also really just brightens up the look. And I really enjoyed this shade right here. It can work as a great high layer on the face or just like a neutral pop to the lid. And I've done multiple looks with this palette. I've of course played with the crazy colors and I've done looks with just these simple blush tones right here and it really creates just a great neutral eye look. Overall, I'm very impressed with this palette and I think she did a great job curating these colors. I wouldn't say that these are everyday colors that I personally go for, but these have made me go for colors that I don't normally go for and I'm just impressed with the overall quality and the versatility and I know seven seems kind of low but that's purely just coming from a point of colors that I wear all the time and it's not really these colors but I've been very impressed by this palette. Moving on to number six, this is the Huda Beauty Purple Haze palette. Now I've used this a few times more since my review and I still really do love the color story of this. I think it's a very well curated purple palette but I will say quality wise I find the colors to fade and they also take a lot of building up on the eye. So you do need to work with them a little bit, but this is still ranking where it's ranking because I do love the color story so much. And when I get the look that I want, when it's there, it's there, you know, it's really, really nice. So you do have to put a little bit of extra work in for this guy and make sure you have a good eyeshadow base, glitter glue, all of that stuff. You have to know how to work with it. So I do think it's really nice and I don't want to steer you away from it, but do be aware, you know, this isn't the best formula. I think the Huda formula and her bigger palettes are better than these guys right here but you do get great color stories and I just think that they curate the best palettes from this line and if you like purples I enjoy this purple palette a lot I've been wanting to grab for it because I love purples so much and I've had to take my hands away from it and use other palettes I'm always so tempted to use this palette just because of the way that it looks it's so appealing to me moving on to number five I think it's the packaging which is why I love this so much this is the Marc Jacobs terrific palette this is part of his very merry cherry holiday collection and it's kind of one side or the other as far as liking the packaging or not because you know what when you do think of Marc Jacobs you definitely think of luxury mature all of that and this is kind of cheapy matches my earrings <laughs> juvenile whatever whatever I mean you guys know I love luxe expensive looking packaging but I also love cutesy juvenile packaging so I like the packaging the packaging is one of the reasons that I picked this up because this isn't necessarily a color story that I would go for on an everyday basis but I do really enjoy this palette now if you watch my original review this shade right here to me I was disappointed in and when you have a palette with such a limited number of shades it is really important that every shade works really good so that you are getting a bigger bang for your buck a bigger palette okay Okay, if one or two don't work whatever but when it is a limited number everything needs to work so that was the only disappointment that I had and also I had high hopes for the shadow because it could really be a game changer in this palette it's like a pivotal color but unfortunately this color didn't work but everything else works really great I'm especially in love with this glittery shade right here and like I said this may not be my everyday color story here but I really do enjoy this when I want a look that's kind of this color especially as the holidays near I'm gonna want more colors like this. So I've been enjoying the quality of this a lot. The packaging makes me happy. I've grabbed for this palette a few more times since I got in it and I have enjoyed it quite a lot. Moving on to number four. Now this is not a new release. It's a palette that I picked up during a Sephora sale and this is Noir Foom. And I had this sitting for a while in my collection before I tried it, which is very embarrassing. But when you review makeup, that's, that, it just happens sometimes. But anyways, I love this color story. Now on the eyes, you know what? I will admit it does not look like anything special. But you guys know how I love these more cool toned kind of neutrals. And these are great everyday cool toned neutrals. And of course, with Tom Ford, you get buttery smooth mattes. They just blend incredibly. I will say, 
okay? These two shimmer shades right here, they don't look like anything special on the eye, especially for me who likes a really metallic eyelid. When I put them on, I am a little bit like, <sighs> but you know what? At the end of the day, I just love these tones so much and this is such an easy palette to grab for. The quality is great and if I do want a little bit extra pizzazz, I'll just go into that glitter drawer that we all have with all of our single liquid glitters, liquid eyeshadows, and I'll pop that on the lid if I want something more. These are base shades that I feel very comfortable going for. It's great quality and I really enjoyed this palette for that reason. As far as just everyday practicality, this has been a go-to of mine and I'm really excited that I did end up adding this to my Tom Ford collection because I'd been eyeing it for a while and I do not regret it at all and I'm very, very sorry it took me a long time to try you out. You're kind of boring looking, but I love you. All right, so let's move on to number three. And this is the palette that I'm wearing right now. Ugh. I mean, this for fall, I just wanna grab for it every day and it is the Huda Beauty Khaki Haze. Now again, quality is not luxury quality on this. This takes a little bit of time to blend, I will admit. In my original review, I think I used a really light hand or something, I don't know, but I did not experience blending issues and I wouldn't necessarily say I experienced blending issues at all, but it's more so it just takes a little bit to work the shadow out. So this isn't going to be a formula that blends itself out. Like you gotta put the work in to blend it out. But I just love the tones in here so much. I love the shimmer shades. I just think they look stunning. Now I did use a glitter glue today because I really wanted the metallicness to show off. In particular, the color story in here is why this is ranking so high. I do wish, you know, if we could get this in a Tom Ford formula, this would be the ultimate palette for me, I have got to say. But yeah, I want more palettes to look like this because I'm obsessed with it. You can get green, you can get coppers like I have for today's look. I just, oh, it is a gorgeous palette and I do recommend this palette for sure. I've almost sabotaged myself with buying such amazing luxury makeup because now if something is not luxury quality, I'm like, <laughs> like I'm a snob about it and I have to stop. This, I did not pay a luxury price for this, you know? It shouldn't have luxury quality. Anyways, it's a gorgeous palette. Highly recommend it for this time of year. I feel like I get a lot of different different looks with it that I'm really into, so I've been loving that. Okay, so let's move on to numero dos. Mm -hmm. Charlotte Tilbury's Bejeweled Eyes to Hypnotize. I love the color story in this guy, and I love Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadows. I really do. They have snuck up on me in the last year and have become one of my favorite formulas. For a while, I tried to convince myself that they were overpriced and just not worth the money. She must have changed her formula. Like, she did change her formula, and ever since, she's kind of upped her eyeshadow game. They are so good. So good. And I love these big guys because they are such a good value and there is no compromise in the quality. These are still the same quality that are in her quads. I just love the different options that you have here. You have cool tone browns over here. You have nice purples, a more pinky look, and then a more warm golden kind of brown kind of look. And it's just such great colors to grab for. I've mentioned this multiple times. It's not my favorite of these longer palettes that she's come out with. It's really not, but they're all just so good. And I haven't grabbed for this a lot, I will be honest. There's just been so many options. I've been overwhelmed, but I do enjoy the quality of this and I know as time goes on It's definitely going to get a lot more use out of me because the colors are just so good and the quality is just so good I'm gonna use this tomorrow because I need to give it some love. All right, so let's move on to my number one favorite And honestly, I feel like this should not come as a surprise to you guys <sighs> Natasha Denona, of course, her glam palette. I don't even want to talk about this too much because I've already said everything I've had to say about this in every single one of my videos. Cool tones my favorite. This is a cool tone palette. It's also one of my favorite formulas because Natasha, 100% of this is really great quality and it's just a very well curated, thought out palette. There are some neutral neutral tones, but there's also some cool neutral tones and it's just a fabulous everyday palette for me. I want to grab for it every day. I've had to stop myself because there's a billion other palettes that I also want to grab for every day. And this is one that I know is going to be used and abused as time goes on because it is just a palette that I feel so 
comfortable with and I know every time I wear this I'm going to love the look that I come out with so I have to not use it because it will be used a ton it's just a gorgeous palette and I love the direction that the makeup trends are going towards more cool tones because I think people just didn't appreciate them and they're so flattering I feel like and I love a cool toned glam look okay cool tones don't have to be blue you know they can be like these there are such a thing as more neutral based like taupey brown cool tones those are my jam and this palette just <sighs> I was looking through all of my Natasha Denona midi palettes and all three that she's come out with this year have been bomb because I'm starting to think of okay like what are my 2020 favorites I pulled out the love palette the bronze palette and this and I was like I might have to put all three of these in because she killed it love wasn't my favorite and I think it's a little bit inconsistent with the quality but I used it a ton I just kept grabbing for it and then bronze of course is just like like it just summer delicious it even looks like the look that i have on today and then she came in with this and stole my heart natasha did a great job with her releases this year anyways i'm getting off on a tangent <laughs> that is all i have for today's video those are all of the palettes that i tried in the month of september make sure you guys keep an eye out next month for when i do the palettes i've tried in october currently working on that and let me know your thoughts on these palettes if you've tried them so that's all i have i will see you guys in the next one make sure you subscribe to my channel like this video comment all of that good stuff and yeah have a wonderful day bye